Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this first official Sunday of 2024. I'm so glad you all have decided to come in to worship this morning on this snowy day. We thank also those who are watching online or on the TV this morning too. On the back of the bulletin, there are a few things happening in the life of the church this week. Uh, Today, after church this morning, we have fellowship downstairs. Come join us for some coffee and some goodies and some time together at the table. Sunday school also happens at 10.15. This afternoon at 4 o'clock, the youth group will meet upstairs in the youth room. On Monday at 1, the PEO will meet here. At 2 o'clock, the M&Ms will be meeting to work on some mission projects together. And at 6 o'clock, the church council meets on Monday evening. On Tuesday at 9, our ladies' Bible study meets in Price Lounge. All the ladies are welcome to come join in as they continue to study Revelation. On Thursday, the United Women in Faith board meeting is at 11.15. And the, no, no, okay, thank you. No, you no meeting this week for United Women in Faith. Don't come. Okay, stay home. Be safe in the snow, too. So no meeting this week for United Women in Faith. Thank you. But the Potter's Men's Group, are you all meeting at 6 on Thursday? Yes, okay, so men, come at 6 o'clock for the Potter's meeting downstairs in the Jonah's room. Saturday at 9 o'clock, be meeting to undecorate the church. We give thanks for those who have decorated the church and the beauty that we've had this Christmas season. But unfortunately, it's time to take things down and put them away and move forward in the year. So 9 o'clock on Saturday, we'll be undecorating the church. And then next Sunday, join us again for worship at 9 or 11, or you can come on Saturday night at 5.30. If you um, bought a poinsettia or brought one in and you have not picked yours up, please pick it up today or come during the week and pick it up when the office is open. Our health and wellness committee is continuing to collect baby items, and they're over here, and those will go to our local health department to help mothers and families in need in our area. God is good. All of the time. And all of the time. God is good. Amen. Let us worship the Lord together. Let's stand and join in our call to worship today. In the beginning, God swept over waters, spoke life into existence, created day and night, and they call it good. As the days and nights of creation filled with life, God made humanity out of the dirt to love and tend creation, to be loved and tended by God. As we lost our way, God sent Jesus, love incarnate, to show us the way back. On the day Jesus came to the banks of the Jordan River to be baptized, God declared, You are my son. With you, I am well pleased. Let us then follow Jesus into the waters, remembering our baptism in which God claims us as beloved children, the family of God. Please join in singing the opening hymn, 234, O Come All Ye Faithful. We'll be singing verses 1 through 4 and 6. <laughs>
Oh, come, let us adore him. Amen. He is so beautiful and worthy, and he is our God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Holy God, eternal spirit, we thank you for baptizing us into one body in Jesus the Christ. Wash over us with your spirit, Lord, that, like Jesus, we may serve you in serving humanity. Baptize us with the fire of your truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jill and April and Lori and Megan so much for sharing the gift of music with us this morning. If our children would like to come forward, come on down. And while they're coming, I noticed that Mark Schooneman is sitting over here this morning. I'm going to call you out, Mark. I get to see Mark every Sunday morning up from the soundboard, but after 25 years, is it 25 years? Mark is retired from running our soundboard, so we are thankful for all you've done for all those many years. Thank you so much. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's it going? Good? Can I sit here too? Okay. I got a couple things today. Anybody know? All right. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Hi, honey. Yeah. Anybody know what these are? What would you call them? Stars. Yeah, they're stars. Do you know what stars have to do with the Christmas story? No? How about I read a story? Is that okay? All right. <laughs> there were... I'll read out of our Jesus Calling book, okay? And there are one, two, three people. They look like kings, maybe, on their camels. And here's what happened. Jesus has been born, and this is what happens next. In the far east, some wise men saw a bright star in the sky 
It's a star, one of them said, a sign from God. So they set out on a very long journey, following the star, searching for the little king of kings. They stopped in Jerusalem where King Herod ruled and asked for directions. Herod was an evil king. He was not nice at all. He felt jealous to hear of this baby king, Jesus. No one is more of a king than I am, Herod complained to himself. Herod lied to the wise men. When you find Jesus, come back and tell me where he is. I want to go and worship him, too. Then the wise men followed the star to Bethlehem, and they found Jesus and Mary. They knelt down and worshipped Jesus and gave him gifts fit for a king. But God warned them in a dream not to tell Herod where, where to find Jesus. The wise men obeyed God and went home by another road. When King Herod heard that the wise men had tricked him, oh boy, he got really, really mad. He became so jealous of Jesus that he wanted his men to kill all the baby boys that were two years old and younger in Bethlehem. Well, God wasn't going to let that happen. So he sent an angel to warn Joseph, hurry, take Mary and Jesus to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you to come back because Herod wants to... To get rid of the baby Jesus. In the darkness of the night, when no one saw, Joseph slipped away to Egypt with Mary and Jesus, and they stayed there safely until the evil king Herod died. God took care of baby Jesus, and God takes care of us too. But the wise men, they all followed the star to come and find Jesus. Do you? I'm glad you like to watch it. I like to watch it too. <laughs> so, in our. Yeah. It wasn't, no. I didn't know it was going to be. I had a bunny. That's so cute, and you got a bunny. Thank you. Awesome. So, our star, the star of our life, the one that we should follow, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. Today, we celebrate the wise men following the star at the day called Epiphany, which that's a funny word. But it's just the wise men followed the star and they found baby Jesus. So for us, we got to keep following Jesus in our lives, too. I'm going to give you guys a paper if you want to color your own star. Take it home with you, okay? But will you pray with me first? God, we give you thanks for your many gifts and blessings. Help us to follow you with our whole heart. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, you all. Star. You got it? Okay. You can have an extra one, or if any adults would like one, I got some. Would you please rise for the gospel reading from the Matthew, book of Matthew? <clears throat> the Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go! and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. 
Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Merry Christmas. <coughs> Merry One more time. <laughs> Yesterday was officially the last day of the Christmas season. It was Epiphany. January 6th is Epiphany. And did you know that the 12 days of Christmas aren't the days leading up to Christmas, but the days after Christmas? We get to celebrate longer than sometimes we do. The days between Christmas Day and Epiphany, number well, which was celebrated yesterday, January 6th. So what in the world is Epiphany? Epiphany is the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles as presented by the Magi or the wise men. Epiphany is a Christian feast day commemorating the visit of the Magi to baby Jesus. It's sometimes called Three Kings Day. And although we don't really know if there were three Magi exactly, we know that they did bring three different gifts. So three kings or three magi makes sense in that way. In Matthew chapter 2, Jesus has been born in Bethlehem of Judea. King Herod is the Roman ruler in charge. The magi or the wise men from the east come to Jerusalem. They're wondering, where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? They saw his star when it rose, and they've come to Bethlehem to worship him. The wise men go to King Herod. He's the king, after all. He should know what's happening in his kingdom. They think that he's going to know where this king of the Jews is. When Herod hears their news, he's disturbed and perhaps a whole lot jealous. (laughs) And there can only be one king, and currently it is him. Herod gathers together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law. He wants to know where this Messiah was supposed to be born. They tell him that the prophets have said it would be in Bethlehem in Judea. Here in Matthew 2, they quote the prophet Micah in Micah 5, verses 2 and 4. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah... Out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, of ancient times. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Herod hosts a secret meeting with the Magi. He plots a plan. He expresses that his intentions are that he wants to know where baby Jesus is so he can go and worship him. But the intentions of his heart are a totally different story. We learn a few verses later that Herod indeed wants the child dead. The Magi are wise and they are warned in a dream, don't go back to Herod. So they go home by another route. But first, They go and they visit baby Jesus. They are led to where Jesus is by the star. It stops over the place where the child is. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Not just filled with joy or a little bit of joy, but overjoyed. Have you ever been overjoyed? Has your cup ever run over by the power of the Holy Spirit? There is nothing like that feeling, and it can't be bought or replicated. The wise men are overjoyed at the possibility of seeing baby Jesus. Do you get overjoyed by the possibility of coming to meet Jesus, of coming to worship him? Do you get overjoyed when you worship him? The Magi make it to the house where Jesus and Mary are. They bow down and worship him. They open their treasuries and present him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Has anybody put any gold, frankincense, and myrrh in the health and wellness basket? (laughs) They're not very practical gifts for a baby or a toddler. (laughs) 
However, there is holy and prophetic significance in these three gifts that they give to him. Gold is the gold, it's the gift of kings. Frankincense is a perfume or an incense used by priests in worship. It signifies deity or God's presence. Myrrh is a perfume. In the Bible, it was used as anointing oil for consecrating priests and the tabernacle and kings. It was used in the purification or the beauty treatments of Queen Esther. Myrrh is used for healing and anointing, but it's also used in embalming bodies for burial. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is more than deserving of this gift of gold. Jesus is fully God and fully human. He's no ordinary man or baby. Jesus is the great high priest. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus is our healer and great physician. He dies on the cross for our sin. Kingship, worship, death, and mourning are all related to Jesus. These wise men, just, they just met baby Jesus, yet somehow they just know what to bring and give to him. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Jesus the babe, born in a manger and wrapped in swaddling clothes, changed history. Everyday, ordinary shepherds came to worship him. Rich, wise men also came to worship him. The first year that I worked at the Grand Ode Opry in Nashville was the last year that the Radio City Rockettes were there during their annual Christmas Spectacular. And I absolutely loved it, but my favorite part of the whole thing is the very last scene. It's their portrayal of the nativity scene, full with all of the pomp and circumstance, elaborate costumes, the wise men come marching in. They even have live animals, sheep and donkey and camels even, walking across the stage. And as the whole pomp and circumstance is happening and they parade across, there's this reading of the 1926 poem, one Solitary Life by Reverend James Allen Francis. Hear these words today. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in still another village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a house. He didn't go to college. He never visited a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things one usually associates with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 when the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. He was turned over to his enemies and he went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth. When he was dying, his executioner gambled for his clothes, the only property he had on earth. And when he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Twenty centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliament that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, put together have not affected the life of man on earth as much as that one solitary life. Have you allowed that one solitary life to impact yours? Today is a great place to start or to begin again. You may not be a wise man or a rich man or a woman. You may not have the gifts of gold, frankincense, or myrrh. But what do you have that you can offer to the Lord? 
In the Bleak Midwinter by Christina Rossetti beautifully states it this way. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give him my heart. Give him your heart. You won't regret it. Be overjoyed and worship the Lord with gladness. Give God all that you got. He is worthy and trustworthy. At the start of the new year, many Methodists returned to John Wesley's covenant prayer. As we begin 2024, may these words ring true in our hearts and in our lives. Will you join me in committing or recommitting your life to Christ today as we begin 2024 and as we pray together John Wesley's Covenant Prayer? It's in your bulletin and also on the screen. Thank you, Heather. So let's pray together. I am no longer my own but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Thou art mine, and I am Thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Amen. So be it. May we give to the Lord this morning through our tithes and offerings.
pray. God of redemption and new life, we focus once more this day on the greatest gift ever given, Jesus our Savior. As he was baptized by John in the Jordan, we were able to share in this baptism and receive the promise of sharing in Jesus' resurrection. As we leave one year behind and look with hope to the new year ahead, help us to live and give of ourselves as those who know every day what a great gift we have been given. May it move us to give our whole selves more freely. In the name of Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Please be seated and join me in singing hymn 238, Angels We Have Heard on High.
or the start of the new year, many people like to pick a word to help guide them for the year. Some examples I've done in my own life in the last 10 years or so were like hope or love or dream. Maybe you're someone who likes to do that and pick words to guide you. Um, as Christians, I believe that Jesus is the one that we need to set our lives upon and to be the star of our lives. This year, I have um, placed some stars in the baskets up front. When we come forward for communion in a moment, if you'd like to pick one up, on one side of the star is the name of Jesus. May you pray over it and see how God may be at work in your life in such a way already, or how God might be in your life in such a way in the coming year. So pray, ask God to help guide you, and then wait and see what God does. Uh, for example, the one that I pulled for myself is bread of life. So we'll see how God is already at work in such a way in my life, and how in the coming year God will continue to show up as the bread of life as we prepare for communion. There we go already. Okay. Anyway, as United Methodists, we celebrate open communion, and all are welcome to come and participate and share in the feast, the celebration that God has given to us. Um, you, if you'll turn in your hymnal, beginning on page 12 or also on the screen today, we will join in the liturgy. And my part today is just a little bit different for Epiphany, but your part will stay the same. So let us join together. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. In his baptism and in table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. 
On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until you return, Lord, until you have in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is at the table for us. The body of Christ broken for us. And the blood of Christ poured out for us because God loved us that much and continues to love us today. Will those who are assisting come forward?
Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have made yourself known to us. May we take and receive and then go and tell the good news of the gospel. Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness of our sins and for the new life we can have in you. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Please join in singing hymn 254, We Three Kings.
pray together. Merciful God, we give you thanks for this new year, for the breath in our lungs, for all that you're doing in our midst. Lord, help us to seek you as we begin 2024. May we fix our eyes on you and see you show up in our lives in unexpected ways. God, help us to go and tell the good news of the gospel story, that Christ came, that you are Emmanuel, God with us, that our sins have been forgiven. And in you there is hope and light and love and peace and so much more. God, we ask that you would be with those who need your healing hand today. God, there are um, known and unknown things happening in the life of our congregation of people who need your healing hand, Lord. God, just go before us and be the great physician. God, we just ask that you would be with those who are in the hospital or the nursing home or homebound today. God, we thank you that you are a great physician and that you are already at work. Lord, we ask also that you would just continue to be with our church family. Help us to continue growing in your love and in your grace. May we be united as one, Lord. Lord, we lift up our community to you. God, you know the many needs that are present here in Kiwani and our surrounding area. God, help us to meet those needs and to be your hands and your feet. God, we also lift up our first responders and nurses and doctors and um, police and others who continue to work on our behalf so that we might be safe and healthy and whole. Lord, we also lift up the many places around the world that continue to be at unrest. Lord, we pray for Israel and Palestine and Ukraine. And Lord, there, you are already there at work. Just continue to be at work, Lord, and help to meet the needs of your people. God, we pray for your peace on earth. Lord, we also lift up our service men and women who are stationed at home and around the world. God, continue to watch over them and help them to come back home safely. Lord, we also lift up those who are grieving in this season. God, you are our peace, our comforter and sustainer. God, remind those who need your help and your hope today that you are present and you are at work. God, we also all want to take time this morning to lift up whatever may be on our own hearts to you today. God, continue to go before us. Lead us, guide us, direct us. Help our eyes to stay focused in on you as we begin 2024 and as we continue beyond. Lord, we thank you again for being our hope and our joy and our salvation. And we join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join in singing the closing hymn 239, Silent Night, Holy Night.
Christ the Savior is born. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go forth in his peace and be overjoyed. Amen.